This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Friday, April the 5th, 2019. It's the feast of St. Vincent Ferrer, the Spanish Dominican in the 14th century, who memorized the entire Bible. He was born in 1350 in Valencia in Spain. He joined the Dominicans and took the name of St. Vincent, the 4th century deacon martyr who was the patron saint of his hometown. He was ordained as a priest in Barcelona, but spent his life all over Western Europe, going as far as England in the West and Italy in the East. He converted all sorts of folks through a mixture of his knowledge of scripture and of logic and philosophy. He died at the age of 69 in France and was canonized less than 50 years later. He is the patron of builders, prisoners, construction workers, plumbers, fishermen, and Spanish orphans although I imagine a Dutch orphan would find a hearing if he asked. It's the anniversary in 1792 of the first ever presidential veto. The president was George Washington and the bill was about apportionment. So apportionment has to do with the way seats in the House of Representatives are divided based on population. He wrote veto, which is Latin for I oppose or I refuse, and the bill was dead. It would be 50 years before a president's veto was overridden by Congress, and that would be President John Tyler, who vetoed a bill that would have removed the president's authority to build Coast Guard vessels without congressional approval. It was President Franklin Pierce who got his stamp handed back to him five out of the nine times that he tried to veto a law. No president has ever come close to having 50% of his vetoes overturned. Of the 2,500 bills that presidents have vetoed, only about 5% have ever been overturned. But that didn't happen today on the first veto a U.S. president exercised in 1792. It's the birthday of philosopher Thomas Hobbes. He was an English-born philosopher who was one of the fathers of social contract theory. Hobbes was brilliant and contributed to all sorts of fields of study. Social contract was nothing new. Jean Locke, Jean-Jacques Rousseau would also make major contributions to the field. Hobbes' book Leviathan is his most famous work, and in it he poses a thought experiment. And this is where we get the idea that man is alone in a, quote, state of nature. So what does he do? Well, he must give up some of his rights to enter into a social contract with others for protection and sustenance. And if we think about it, isn't that what society and government is? But it's a dangerous philosophy because, in fact, we are not alone in a state of nature. It's just a thought experiment. It's fiction. We are, in fact, born into families. And families make up communities, and communities make up governments. And while the thought experiment is clean and clinical, it fails for the same reason Karl Marx's Communist Manifesto inevitably fails every time someone tries to live it out. Human beings are not theoretical. They're real. Hobbes's fictional state of nature isn't real. Economist Thomas Sewell has a brilliant quip in which he says all of modernity is an effort to replace that which works with that which sounds good. For better or worse, Hobbes had a huge impact on modernity and he was born today in 1588. Finally, today in 1856, Booker T. Washington was born. He was an educator, a public speaker, and an advisor to Presidents Benjamin Harrison, Grover Cleveland, William McKinley, Teddy Roosevelt, and William Howard Taft. And he was born as a slave. He lived under the Jim Crow laws. And he fought not just for rights, but for dignity. While he never lived to see them, Booker T. Washington laid the groundwork for what we call the Civil Rights Movement. And his birthday is today. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.